Welcome back to Basin Motorsports. So today we are going to fix up the fuel system on the 86 hatchback Fox Body Mustang with a new fuel filter. And we're also gonna drop the tank out and give a check on the inside of the tank, get all the old gas out and check the fuel pump itself to make sure it's in good shape. Now it is quite a cold day here. Even though I've ran my DeWalt heater and it's still probably in the high 60s, laying on the concrete floor is really gonna be cold. So I dug out this old one-piece thermal. Now this is a Walls brand, and this thing is literally 30 years old, and it still fits. I'm not gonna say well, but it still fits. I am shocked. I dug it out of the closet, and I can remember laying in my parents' driveway when I was 14 through 16, 17, changing stuff in the snow on old 4x4s, and I'm kinda glad this stuff kinda fits. It'll be all right. So. First thing we're gonna do is get rid of the old fuel filter out of the Mustang there. All right, so to get started on taking the fuel filter out itself, you're gonna be on the passenger side rear of the vehicle. Here is the passenger side right rear tire. You also have the fuel filler here. And the filter itself is almost directly inboard of your tire itself from the shock. Here is my rear end. If I pan up, there is my fuel filter. So you can see shock, tire inside the frame there's a fuel filter now the the worm gear there that is what holds the filter into that bracket and then on each side you can see the line going in and out and the white clips there are what hold the line in so in order to take that filter out what i will do is pop out those white clips you can just use a, a, Phillip, a flathead screwdriver pop those clips out and you might use some needle nose to get those out too. Once the lines are off, you can then use a flathead screwdriver, undo the worm gear a little bit, and then just simply slide the filter out. Now when it comes time to take the filter off, one thing you wanna have is no pressure in the fuel lines. So with this on the 86, it hasn't been run in months. I haven't tried to start it in months or at least a month or something like that. So I have no doubt that there is little to no pressure in there. If I take the lines off, I don't worry about uh, a fuel spray or anything else. It'll drip because it's got fuel in it, but it's not gonna spray because it's under pressure. If you've recently run any vehicle that's fuel injection, especially that's running 40 to 50 PSI, the way to get rid of that is you can uh, start the vehicle, uh, let the vehicle run, and then you can uh, either pull the fuse to the fuel filter or the fuel pump or the relay that runs the fuel pump. What that does is it basically turns the pump off. The, the engine will still run and it will still suck all that fuel out, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna basically run itself out of gas. So by taking the gas out under the pressure, it basically bleeds the system out. And that way, once the engine turns off because it's run out of gas, you won't have it under pressure anymore. Simple way to do it, just be safe with it. You remember gas is gonna be above you and it's no fun to get sprayed with high pressure gas. So just be careful with that. With that taken off, you can see that both lines are loose and here's the new filter. So you can see one edge is rounded and then you've got another flat. So before you take this old one out, just take notice of which way it's supposed to go. So the flat should go pointed towards the driver's side. That means, uh, let's see, what is in and out? Okay, so the pump side is here that goes to the round, and then the outside, which is the out here, goes this way. So what, what that makes notice is that if you turn it around the other way, it definitely doesn't really want to flow as well. So you can just make, make note that this side goes that way. Now one thing to note uh, also is that the new pump itself is gonna come with some rubber caps on here, on the edges. And before I uh, take the old one out, what I do is I take the caps off of here and I'm gonna put them on the old filter. What it's gonna do is it's basically gonna block the in and out so that way when I take it out, uh, gas doesn't spill out of here. You can see it's already kind of wet because gas has already started to spill. So if you just put the rubber caps on there, boop, and on the other side, then you can take it out because it's basically contained all the gas. You don't have to worry about spilling it on yourself. And then just be careful, these fuel lines themselves will have a little bit of gas like that in them. So you just have to be careful on that. So once you have the new white clips that come with these, you can pry out the old ones, 
and they may break. They're, they get old and crusty and they kind of break. So the new ones should go in like this. They should be pushed in all the way and they should protrude out just a little bit on the other side. What you expect to see is that there's kind of like a, I guess a uh, circular centerpiece there. If I really get up close, you can see it directly fits on the line itself. So once you put the filter up in the bracket up in here, tighten it down first, then you can snap on your lines. Now I'm only gonna snap on the output there because I wanna leave the input loose so that I can drop the tank out. Otherwise I would have to um, basically take it back apart once I take the tank out. So I'll leave that one, but I can uh, connect up first the one going out from the tank there because I don't need it. I, need, I can leave it with the car itself. All right, so now the clamp is tight, the clamp here. So you see I can push and that doesn't come out. Now when you go to put these on, you're just gonna slip it on there and then you're gonna push until you hear it click. All right, once you hear it click, you can just pull it back off. And if you can't pull it back off, you know it's locked on there. If you can pull it back off, then it didn't get snapped on enough. So you can see that should have a little bit of play in it, but I can't pull. So when it's pressurized, it doesn't pop off there and spray gas everywhere. Okay, so the next piece is going to come off is going to be your return line. And that is going to be your other hose. So this one goes to the filter. You can see right here with the red, this is what came on the uh, new fuel filter. So I've just put it on here just to keep dirt out. And then you've got your line here. Ooh, there got a line here. Now this is your return line. This is your other line that's going uh, to from the tank. So this comes, uh, any fuel from the engine not used comes back in. Now you'll notice right here, it has some tabs. There is a clip, if I pull this out of the way, you can see there's a plastic clip above the rib right here. Now this has these little kind of detents here, these tabs that go inside of here. So you want to push the line up that way, use it like a pair of needle nose if you have them, and you want to squeeze on these tabs in here inside the channel. Squeeze them in and then pull down. That should release this. Now it's going to be difficult, I'll agree with that. Just push up, squeeze, and then pull down. You might be able to get it with your fingers. I use uh, normally some needle nose pliers. So the tank itself is held on by two different straps. And if I show you, this is one strap here, and it goes up to a bolt being held up there. Oh my goodness. So you can see that bolt right there is what is holding that strap. So in order to get this tank out, those two straps need to come out. That is what supports or holds the tank to the body. Now also, this is gonna be your fuel filler in from the body up, it goes through the body and down in. You've got this strap that holds these two together. So you'll need to take this bolt out, which then frees up this clamp. And then this will allow the uh, fuel filler to come out of the tank. You'll allow them to separate out. And then you've also got a uh, grommet in here, a rubber grommet that you'll need to check to make sure it's still in good shape. And the last piece is on when you come out this is gonna be your wiring harness. Uh, it's either gonna be fuel injected, so it's gonna either apply power to a fuel uh, pump itself, or it could just be your uh, sensor for the fuel level on that. Just be cautious of that, that's gonna to have to come apart so that uh, one half will stay with the body, the other half will stay with the tank, and it's probably just a, a simple uh, squeeze connector, pop that off, uh, take this off, and then the two bolts, and then the tank itself should slowly drop out. So once you have this big mother trucker pulled out, you will have a vent hose that needs to be just pulled off. There is no clip. And then you've got to work it loose. So one of my bolts, sorry, I'm winded. One of my bolts was, uh, I think, cross threaded. So it did not want to come out. And then you can also see this is where your filler goes in. This seal, which is probably the original, is all cracked up. So I will replace this. I'll get a new one in order. And this just pops out of there pretty easy. But that keeps your gas pressurized and fumes in. So with that unplugged, I can already smell the gas. Uh, otherwise, it's just dirty. Um, this is your fuel pump lines in and out. You're out and return. This is your power and then your sender and a bunch of other stuff. So, 
I am going to uh, do my best to get this taped up, sealed up, and then uh, we'll get these cleaned off and the fuel pump out, uh, double check it, look at your sender, all that kind of other fun stuff like that, and then get the tank cleaned up before it goes back in. All right, so with the fuel tank out of the 86, I have taken some time to clean up the surface. So I first, everybody's turn this around, you can see this plastic bag. That is over the uh, fuel filler in. So I took the grommet out, I took the bag, stretched it over, and then I just used some stainless steel wire to essentially seal up that hole. And then I just took um, either a brush, basically, or a nylon brush, brushed it all down to get the dirt loose, used my vacuum to take it off, my shop vac, uh, and then I sprayed it with just some simple uh, window cleaner and wiped it off. So. Everything came off great. The uh, harnesses came off. Fuel lines are in great shape. Everything looks good. I mean, uh, other than it being a little oily and dirty, but for an 86, this is in really good shape. I'm really excited by it. Um, I, I'm going to think this car has lived a pretty good life um, so far. The top of the tank, which, you know, sits in the middle of nothing, uh, it's in really good shape. So. I'm next gonna take a hammer and screwdriver and pop open these clips. So you just drive these basically the tops. You drive them counterclockwise, pop them loose. Uh, then I can take out my sender, my pump, and, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, just take a look at that, make sure things in good shape. I know the sender did work in the car, so no big deal. Um, I'll take out the pump, make sure the sock's in great shape, see if I need to replace it. I probably will just replace it because I'm already in here. And then I've got a gas can you can kind of see in the corner where I'm going to suck out all this old fuel and just basically take it and uh, put it to something on the farm that I uh, don't need a really good fuel in. So once I get that all that out, this will be basically left dry. I'll put it back in the car dry so I can put in only fresh fuel with some stabilizer, put the harness back on and all that. So let's get these two taken out, take the rings off of them, take them out, see what we got there, and uh, then we'll get the fuel out of it. So here is the fuel pump out. Now the sock or the screen on it really is, it looks pretty darn good. It's a little worn. It's, um, that's why it's kind of got an orange tint to it, but I mean, I can see through it. How amazing is that? I think this is the original stuff. Now this pump, if I can get in here, this is a Walbro pump, a Walbro brand. And you know, most people go up to like 155 liter per hour or anything else. And I really think this is the original pump to the car. You look at the clamps there on the rubber line. Those are uh, squeeze clamps. Most of the time when they're changed, they're changed to like a worm gear or the screw clamps. That is a squeeze clamp. And uh, yeah, I think this is the original pump that goes to this car. And it's still running good. Still nice and clean. So really, I'm just going to put this thing back in. And uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to just take the gas out of this tank get this thing in good shape and slap it back in there. All right, so in order to get the gas out of the tank, here's kind of the situation I've done. So I've taken one of my tires, set the tank up on there, and what I'm using is just basically a simple siphon. Now this is about $4 at Walmart, going into a gas can here. And so the basics of it is you put the reservoir, which in this case is the gas tank, higher vertically than in the uh, receptacle which is going to be the gas there now you get a suction going from um, basically this bulb so you put your finger over the out out uh, give it a couple squeeze which gets suction and then through gravity what it does is it keeps suction and it keeps pulling this down in so now that is down in basically this bottom corner down here and as it goes along if I start to see a little bit of air bubbles what I can do is I can tilt the tank down to get the glass to flow down to this bottom corner here just to keep that suction going so it's basically once it gets suction it's gravity feed so um, it basically wants to go from this point here and it goes down to a lower condition down in here 
And that's how kind of a, a suction pump works. It really isn't a lot of work other than to get it initially going. And uh, you can just basically see, you probably can't see that gas moving in there, but if it uh, gets any gas bulbs or whatever else, it will show. But it's basically going, sucking out of there, going around in, dumping down in, into this gas can. And if I had smell o vision you'd be like, ooh, that's some nasty old gas. All right, so one of the last pieces to go on this fuel tank is going to be a new fuel grommet, which just snaps into there. Just double check yourself that there is no dirt sitting on the back side of this ring. Uh, normally the seal will catch it in that. So just use a small screwdriver and the blade, kind of clean it out. Just be sure not to get any down in here. And then I'll get the rest of this little bit of dirt out of there before it goes back in the car. So once you have everything all put back together, this is kind of what you're going to look like. Remember to double check your electrical connection, your fuel filler, make sure you get your bolt down there in your strap to make sure it stays connected. And then, dun 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 Here's all your fuel filter. Now, the pressure line that's gonna go to your fuel filter is going to be very tough to go on. It's a brand new clip, make sure it's seated in there, but I'll tell you, it's going to be really tough to go on. So you're going to have to wiggle it, jiggle it, get it to snap on there. And uh, I think that was one of the major problems with this car. They had changed the fuel filter, I think, right before I, uh, well, five years ago before it went down. Or three years ago before it went to scrap. So um, everything else is good. So you've got your uh, return line here. You've got your pressure line there. And then you have up here is your... Uh, uh, ex exhaust or pressure vent, I guess you'd call it. So that is it. You're in, out, pressure, uh, and everything else. Now at this point, if you uh, are ready to go, you can get some fresh fuel. I'd say throw some stabilizer in it, unless you're going to burn a lot of gas through it. That way it uh, is good to go. Now for me, I'm going to next go work on the heater core, because I've got the dash out of this thing, and I'd like to get that all done and put back together prior to running it. So I will leave it empty for now, and after the heater core, we will go and get this thing uh, fired up. So, if you guys have any questions on anything I did here with the fuel filter, or the fuel pump, uh, the straps, or anything else, just let me know. This is uh, applicable. The tank itself is applicable from the 79 to 93 models. I think the 94 and 95 are probably pretty close also. The filter is in the same spot for 79 to 93 and uh, your fuel lines would just be a little bit different for uh, 84, I think it's 84 up, or the 85, 86 up, whatever fuel injection versus carburetor. They'll be similar, but not truly the exact same. So if you have any questions on any of the different models on that, just let me know. Otherwise, guys, thanks for viewing. Thanks for subscribing, and uh, get ready. This 86 is going to be pounding out of here, and it will be up for sale, hopefully, later this year. So that's it for this time from Basin Motorsports. Kanan is out.